Hello and welcome to this month's Road CC Recommend Show. I'm Rebecca Charlton and alongside me is Liam Carhill. We're back on the sofa and we've got a host of new products ready to show you. Well, we've got some brilliant products in this month's show. There's so much more to tell you about though. Uh, we've got a cracking bit of buying advice on handlebars. We've also got the cafe of the month. We love the cafe of the month section. Um, and we've got a featured route to tell you about. There's loads to get through, Becca. Should we crack on? Let's. Well, first up is the Borg 31 disc wheel set, which if you looked at the spec sheet might be a bit underwhelming. The weight of 1,720 grams seems quite high, but these are the perfect example of why you shouldn't judge a wheel set based on weight alone. Yeah, so Malcolm actually came to the office a few years ago to chat wheels, and I was blown away by his knowledge. Um, I actually tested a set of his tubular cyclocross wheels, and they were the same story as these. Um, performed far better than the weight suggested, and they were bomb-proof. Um, great wheels shows how good wheels can be when a skilled wheel builder gets involved in making them. Yeah, it really does make the world of difference. Well, next you've got Shimano's latest RC9 road shoes in dazzling white. Yeah. And you know I love a white shoe. We love white Forever shoes. Forever trying to keep them clean. I'm, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to keep these as clean as possible, I promise. Um, these, so I've had the old version of these and these are kind of the same story as the old one. They're still very stiff. They're still very comfortable, which makes them a great, um, race shoe the thing with this is that the heel retention has been improved massively you can really mm. feel that um things that might not be so great for shimano fans you've got a slightly redesigned midfoot section and toe box now the toe box has become a little bit wider the midfoot has become a bit narrower whether that suits you or not it's going to be personal preference personally i still find them to be brilliant race shoes so i really like these yeah, and, and I as really like that they're all white as well. You do. Um, they are looking very clean as well, so that's good. Um, but yeah, such an individual thing, as we always say, isn't it? Absolutely. But very, very nice and snazzy. Try not to say snazzy, but just keep saying it. Uh, well, from shiny shoes to the straight cut, bagel bar bag. Uh, this is small, handmade and uses world's excellent nano straps to give a rock solid setup. The bagel bag is 200 millimeters long and 120 mil in diameter, which gives a useful volume of 2.2 liters. The details are neat. There's an elasticated pocket on either end, which is perfect for empty wrappers and multiple loop attachment points for strapping on lights, pumps, or even something like tent poles. The construction and design of the bag are hard to fault really to be honest all i can think about is bagels um mm. i will stop thinking about my stomach for a second uh the socks scribble premium print socks are cool and comfortable summer socks and as you were discussing with all uh, the other week becca the jazzier your socks the better i love a bit of sock game and i love yeah, these actually absolutely um over the leg warmers too yeah yeah. For, for me, yes, but I'd love to know what everyone thinks. Yeah, down in the comments, <laughs> um, away from that contentious topic, uh, the socks have a 16 centimetre cuff, so there's plenty of length, and the top of the foot uses a mesh material for further breathability. Let's dive into some buying advice now, Becca. What are we talking about? Well, Liam, it's all about handlebars this month. Not a particularly tricky one at first glance, but there's plenty to consider beyond width and whether you should splash out on carbon or aluminium. So we'll let Road CC's tech editor, Matt Brett, tell us all about it. Thanks, Becca. This month's buying advice actually comes off the back of one of our recommended products, the Pro PLT Ergo Carbon Handlebar impressed us not only with its performance, but also for the value that it offers. This isn't the cheapest carbon bar on the market, although you can spend a lot more if you want, but it ticked the box for value because of the comfort that it brought. The flat shape on the top section isn't about an aero saving here. The profile is actually designed to give your hands a comfortable place to rest and the uh, damping abilities of the carbon uh, enhance this, leaving your hands and your wrists much better isolated from the harsh road buzz. In terms of buying advice, this is a good example of why you might wish to consider more than just the looks or the width of the bar when you're making your purchase. 
Other factors such as the depth of the drop can play a big part in how comfortable the bar is for you and the riding position that you'll be able to achieve with them. The main measurement to consider on a handlebar is the width and most bars go up in two centimeter or 20 millimeter increments. Riders with broad shoulders will get more stability and perhaps better breathing capacity from wider bars. But if you go too wide, you could end up with aches in your neck and your shoulders. Increasing the width can make the bike feel more stable, whereas going super narrow is usually the preference of racers who want to get aero. Neither approach is definitely going to be more comfortable than the other. The comfort factor for the width is all about what fits best for you. Next up is reach and drop, which alter how long and how low the bar puts you. Generally these days, compact bars where the reach is short and the drop is quite shallow are the popular choice as there isn't the huge change in your body position when you move from the tops to the hoods to the drops that you get on an old style standard handlebar. There are other fit factors to consider such as the shape of the drop and the sweep, uh, but these are the main factors. Beyond fit, you might want to think about performance factors such as stiffness, aerodynamics, the comfort and the weight, focusing on the ones that matter most to you. Using myself as an example, my riding tends to be focused on general fitness these days. I'm not racing anymore, but I still like to go fast from time to time, so I'd look for something comfortable, yet stiff, and maybe even get a bar with some aero touches. Where you ride your bike is also key. The bar that I like on my road bike isn't the one that I'd pick for my gravel bike. Uh, I'd be after something a bit wider for stability off-road and I'd certainly sacrifice stiffness for a bit of extra comfort. It's all about considering what you want from your handlebar and picking one that suits the riding that you're doing. Thanks Matt. Now the Kadex Classics 28 Tubeless is another of our recommended products and this is a tyre that should be of interest to you all road riders. Our testing showed that they coat well on a mix of surfaces so if the roads in your local area are pretty bad or you like to throw in some light gravel sections to your rides then these could be ideal. Uh, so I have to say that one thing that I've learned from testing a range of bikes and all of those tyres that come on those bikes is that it's nice to have that slightly wider tire for just general riding. The, the roads around me, they are a proper mix of brilliant and utter trash. <laughs> so, <laughs> like sum that up. Yeah, utter, utter <laughs> essentially, <trash. laughs> it's one or the other. So, yeah. Becca, what are you looking for in a tire these days? Well, Liam, I have to say I've changed. Um, I'm a bit of a trackie in my background, as you yeah. know. A lot of road, a lot of track, a lot of skinny tires, maybe like PSI have about 160. On like 21 millimeter <laughs> and, and tires, 19 millimeter tires, yeah. Uh, love a tub. Um, but yeah, I'm embracing gravel riding at the moment and I am loving it. Yeah, so I have to say I'm kind of the same. So right now, 25 millimeters for my race bike. I still think it's nice and fast. Um, I do like a very solid tire for racing, but my winter bike and just general riding, 28 millimeters, 30 millimeters, it's just nice to be comfortable. I don't find it actually slower either. It seems yeah. to just roll quite nicely. It what? doesn't fatigue me as well. No, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, as you know, on the beautiful Cannondale Topstone Carbon Lefty One at the moment. Yeah. And I've really embraced the gravel, as I say. Um, but it is that comfort that yeah. is just constantly lovely. But actually, the pace on the road doesn't seem to be It's still fast, isn't it? Mm, Even it is, like 36 mil tyres, 38 yeah. mil tyres, mm -hmm. they still roll really so quick well. With the bars and you quick. can <laughs> flick. You can flick between like just doing some gravel sections and yeah. back onto the road. So you're not yeah. limited to one thing. I'm completely converted, I love uh, it. One of, Becca's got a fancy bike, but one of the few <laughs> bikes that we've actually been able to get hold of ahead of its launch um, is the Vitus ZX1 Evo CRS Di2 2021. And it impressed us with excellent stiffness levels, awesome handling, real world aero, and a spec list that actually defies the price. Well, the amount of stuff you get on that bike is really impressive. Yeah, so the one that we have is the Ultegra R8070 Di2 disc uh, model. It has Reynolds deep carbon wheels that we found to contribute to the brilliant rolling speed. 
and an excellent integrated front end from Vision. In fact, the range is really well spec at every price level. Uh, those Reynolds wheels appear on every bike, apart from the SRAM rival Axis model, which has to step down, unfortunately, presumably due to cost to a set of Prime Attacker aluminium wheels. But the range does represent cracking value. Well, Liam, from a super speedy aero road bike to Vittoria's Tirreno dry gravel tyres, uh, these are a nice fast option for the dry conditions that the tyre is named after, but they're surprisingly capable for more general year-round conditions too. These are tubeless ready, as you'd expect, and come in sizes between 31 and 40 millimetres, though how they measure up will depend on your wheels. The casing is a decently supple 120 TPI, and there is a double layer of puncture protection, which we love don't we and um, but what do you reckon to the tread pattern here well it kind of looks like that lovely mix of like smooth that we were saying is good for like that road speed but also you've got a little bit of shoulder tread mm. just for when you do i'm thinking of you now is it when you <laughs> flick off onto that gravel i know you're going to be carrying the road speed from those crit racing days so when you do flick onto the gravel it is nice to have a bit of shoulder tread just yeah, to yeah. give you something to bite into mm. But yeah, that kind of um, that kind of hybrid, it's uh, really, really useful. Now, it's time to give you a brilliant route to check out. Um, and this month, we're traveling to the Peak District to catch up with a certain Mr. Bruce Dalton. Bruce, what have you got for us? Well, that's what happens when you start filming, you swallow a fly. So the first part of the route takes us out of Bakewell, where we started, up towards Montel Head, where they have the hill climb in the autumn and uh, we're favoured with unseasonably positive Peak District weather. This is Great Longstone, uh, and uh, yeah. So, rolling up here. that is Coleman's for a bit of tiffin and a coffee and then we'll crack on. How far have we done Dan so far? Hour and a half. Hour and a half. Yeah it's not too bad. This is uh, Sir William Hill which is coming up out of Hadsage. Pretty hard climb especially after you've just been in the calf. Use it at your peril but it's uh, long and straight. <laughs> This classic Peak District loop is only 62 kilometres long, but packs in nearly a thousand metres of climbing. In as much as a ride in the peaks is ever easy, this is probably the easier way around to do this ride. If you want to do the hard side of Winnett's Pass, head north out of Batewell towards Hassop Station, or you can start at Hassop and do the first part along the Monsell Trail. You're never that far from civilization on this ride, and the most obvious place to stop for a coffee is at Castleton, about halfway round. There's plenty of cafes there, and also loads of caves, if you like that sort of thing. There are lots of opportunities to extend the route too. You could miss out when it's past and head further north to Edale, or start with a southwest loop through Parsley Hay and Moynash, and then pick up this route near Lytton. Thanks, Bruce. Some of those views look stunning, Becca. Yeah, but the hills to get to them, though. Yeah, yeah <laughs> quite tough. Ouch. Uh, remember that we want to see the routes that you love. All you need to do is plan a route on Commute and invite us to it, or tag us in a ride that you've already done. There's a link popping up now that will take you to a page on Road CC that explains how to do it in more detail. The link's in the description below, too. And if we pick your route, you'll get a free year of Commute premium on us. Not bad. Uh, back to this month's recommended products and this is one for the commuters out there. So Giant's Recon HL 350 front light is just about bright enough to see by on unlit roads but it is best used around town. Becca, Right now, what are you looking for in a front light? Right now, uh, well, it depends if we're going to go to the pub later. We are. But I, well, if we go to the pub, which we will, um, confidence to get home and not yeah. keep clock watching. Yeah, for <laughs> me, it is about right now, these summer months, 
the lights go in away at about 10 o'clock and there are sometimes like I finish work a bit early a bit early a bit late and I want to go for a, a ride and if I start feeling good I want to stay out and I don't want to be time pressured by the sun going down especially if it gets a bit cloudy so yeah having something that's lightweight quite compact and you know will get me home it's absolutely perfect it is yeah that confidence is everything mm. isn't it well next up is sportfuls fiandra pro medium jacket and well it has been ideal for the weather but yeah then we had a heat wave i think we actually made the heat wave come mm -hmm. true didn't we we did say a few weeks ago that yeah. um it this the bad weather was going to continue and look it's nice and sunny now <laughs> so you can thank us um back when it was being tested i bet it had a load of use though because it was really grim yeah, it, it was grim, wasn't it? And I'm sure it will be again. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, as with the standard Sportful Fiandra Pro, the Polartec Neo Shell fabric is the real star of the show here, used for everything but that back panel, the cuffs, waistband and inner collar. But another way, it's the red stuff in the pictures. If you can get creative with your layering, you can use this jacket between about 8 and 16 degrees centigrade. So a great range of temperatures, which we need. In Absolutely. <laughs> so good for a long day out on the bike when you will be inevitably in this country getting a range of temperatures. <laughs> so right now I have actually been loving some very long rides um, and I love having an equally long cafe stop. So this month's recommended cafe stop is up in Scotland. Uh, it's over to Donald to tell us all about it. So I'm Donald from Highland Safaris and we run, we're a visitor centre based in the very heart of Scotland, right on the edge of the Highlands. We run Land Rover Safaris here. We also have uh, great mountain biking and we have a, a Scott um, hire bikes, which we can uh, hire out here. And we have a e-bike charger. We've got a cafe and you can stop here, refuel, give your bike a bit of a clean up, uh, pump up the tires before you head on your own way. We'll be very much looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Donald. Well, if you've got a favorite stop, tell us what they are. There's a link popping up now to the Road CC forum where you can suggest your own favorites. The link's in the description below as well as ever. So if we pick your choice and it's featured on the show, then we'll chuck your favorite cafe some cash to put behind the tail for your next time. Your next cafe stop will be on us. Now, the final product before we get to our product of the month is the Apertura Racing Long Top Tube Pack, and it offers two liters of flexible storage in a slim form factor with rock solid fittings. It features a charging cable port and a two way waterproof zip. And our testing showed it to be perfectly stable when fully loaded. Becca, bike packing, take your fancy. <laughs> does but i just struggle with packing light and i yeah, am too. constantly fascinated by how people do yeah. nail bike packing <laughs> so my dad really wants to go bike packing with me and i'm kind of nearly there with agreeing to go yeah it'd be so nice my conditions are that maybe we leave the tent at home and instead <laughs> go for an airbnb because i would like somewhere to shower and yeah. that's not in a river and, and sleep that's not on the ground you know i'm totally with you yeah. have you considered glamping with some plug sockets yes should we just go glamping, <laughs> we'll, go glamping. we'll go glamping well, that's that one sorted uh, well time for the one that you've all been waiting for it is our product of the month and that goes to the wahoo speed play pedals but for now over to george hill to tell us how great they are uh so speed play were bought out by wahoo in late 2019 um, and Wahoo have essentially looked to improve on what was already, you know, some pretty impressive pedals. Um, so the Zeros are essentially the middle ground uh, with the, within the uh, roster of pedals that they have. Um, now, when, when Wahoo took over, they wanted to obviously improve some of the elements about the pedals uh, that, 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 that they bought. 
So one of the key complaints that people tended to have was that they didn't have sealed bearings, which meant that you then had to grease them yourself. Now this is something that they have fixed, so now they have completely sealed bearings. Uh, now this is, you know, this is a real big improvement because that was the single biggest bugbear that people tended to have about the old versions of the Speedplay Zeros. Um, the, one of the other things that people tended to complain about was that they were difficult to walk in. Now, as you can see with these ones, I have taken off the walkable cover, just this bit, uh, and you can see exactly why they're difficult to walk in, that the profile of them isn't particularly good. And you can see here that these are, this is just, you know, metal. So if you were walking on anything that wasn't kind of basically mud or didn't have a huge amount of friction on it, you know, just even something like concrete might be pretty slippery um, but they have added the walkable cleat which I have added here so this is the walkable cover here which comes as standard with all new speed play pedals uh, with the difference between this one and the uh, older versions is essentially that these ones are black and the other ones were yellow um, but as you can see uh, they're very easy to walk in because the profile of them is pretty good so they're actually the easiest pedal the easiest that I've used um, to walk in uh, you know when compared to the Kios and SPDSLs that I'm used to um, now one of the key elements of the of these pedals is that they have a huge amount of adjustability so if you can see here we have two screws uh, and this means that you can adjust the amount of float that you have within the shoe now for me, this is particularly good. I've got a, an injured right knee at the moment, which is fine for cycling, but it means that in order for me to have, in order for me to be comfortable uh, with my other shoes and my other pedals, I do have to have a lot of um, a lot of heel rub, which is really irritating because you know it just makes my bike look rubbish. Uh, but with these, I, because you can have this adjustability, it means that I can put my, I can have my knee in a position that is comfortable for me, but without that heel rub, which is really fantastic. Um, so I think you can get up to 18 degrees of float on these, which is really fun, which is really great as well. Another really good thing about this is that there's a huge amount of adjustability. So as you can see here, we have four different bolt holes initially, which holds in this top cleat and then there's the standard three bolt system underneath which you can probably just about see here one two three this means that you essentially have two ways of adjusting it kind of around that way uh, which means that you can basically position these in almost any way you want so it, and then in addition to the float that you can get that just means that it's almost impossible to not find something comfortable when you're using these uh, this also means that you get a lower stack height as well so this has a stack height of 11.5 mil which is significantly lower than anything that uh, Shimano or Look can offer uh, and you can really feel this because it means that you can put you can put more power through because there's less material for the power to get through before it gets to the pedal which I know sounds like you can't feel it but genuinely you can really feel the difference when you're using them so yeah Overall, incredibly impressed with these pedals. They took what were already good pedals and then improved on them. Um, so yeah, I gave these a nine out of 10 for the review. I've been using them for, still for another kind of three weeks since I submitted that and my opinion of them has not changed at all. I think they're absolutely fantastic. Thanks, George. Well, that's this month's recommended products. If you want to find the full reviews, they're all on the Road CC Recommend site and there's a link to that in the description below, of course. So if you like this video, if you found it useful, then remember to give it a like, subscribe to the channel because that really does help us out. And if you're really keen, you can click the bell icon and you'll get notified whenever we post a new video. Do Becca, it. <laughs> back next month for a load of new products? Yes, we certainly will be. Perfect. Thanks, well, we'll see you then. Bye-bye for now.